What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Commander Deck Tech. This week, we are doing Eski, God of the Tree. Now, in our case, the only important side for this deck is the back side, the Prismatic Bridge. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature or a Planeswalker card. Put that card into the battlefield and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Now, I built this deck around this side of the card and not the front side. So... I personally have a love-hate relationship with this deck. Um, depending on the playgroup, some playgroups, they see this and they think that this deck is like CDH, five color, like kill you turn one. And it's not. It's not one of those decks that is going to go off turn one or turn two. However, it can get pretty nasty and start taking extra turns. If given the time to set up. Now, in my playgroup specifically, most of the time, they kind of let this deck hang out a little bit in the beginning. Because it is five colors, it does take you a few turns to get to five colors. Now, it's not going to take you like ten turns, but the mana base is kind of slow for this. Um, like always, I'm not going to go over the mana base though. It will be linked in the description box for you guys to go check out. But... It, this deck is an oddity for me because I play a lot of creature heavy decks generally and this one is jank super friends So there's literally four creatures in the whole deck five if you count the commander on the backside But I've never actually cast this side of the card so Yeah prismatic bridge, so let's jump into this the deck is 60% planeswalker, so let's jump right up into this Stack of Planeswalkers. We got Elspeth, Sun's Nemesis, Samut Detested, Angrath, Dove in Hand to Control, The Wander, Ral Isn't, Omnixilus Reignited, Omnixilus The Hate Twisted, Arenan Seven, Dak on Shadow Slayer, Narset the Ancient Way, Chandra, Pyrogenesis, Dove and Bond. This card is insane in this deck. Okay. This freaking Dahada. This card is <laughs> protection from permanence with corruption counters. Plus one. Each opponent loses two life. You gain two life. Put a corruption counter on up to one other target creature or planeswalker. You can minus three at gain control of target creature or planeswalker until end of turn. Untap it and put a corruption counter on it. It gains haste until end of turn. Minus seven gain control of each permanent with a corruption counter on it. So this planeswalker, given a couple turns to set up, or with the right board presence to just go off in one turn, which this deck can, um, you're just pretty much taking everything on the board. Tail the Shieldmate, Kaya Bane of the Dead, and Kaya Intangible Slayer. Probably one of my favorite Planeswalkers in the deck, Nissa World Waker. Um, with this Nissa and the next Planeswalker here, Teferi, Timebender, and two other cards in the deck. There's a way to just take infinite turns with these two Planeswalkers, but definitely my two favorite Planeswalkers in the deck. We got Nissa Vital Force. Garrick Wildspeaker, Garrick Primal Hunter, Nicobolas the Dragon God, Nicobolas the God Pharaoh, to Fairy Master of Time, another way to take extra turns. Liliana Death Death Majesty, Professor Onyx, probably my favorite version of Liliana, Waker of the Dead, and the classic Liliana Vest. Now I know this isn't the top end, like, all $50, $100 Planeswalkers, but this is the version of the deck that I play, and I I enjoy it from time to time, but like I said, it really depends on the playgroup, because sometimes they don't even let it get off the ground. Uh, the four creatures we're running in the deck is Wood Elves, Jornar Adept, because we're playing five color, this just makes all the lands tap for any of the colors just to help us get our colors. 
Karth the Lion. This is a new card that I added in here actually recently. When it enters the battlefield or a planeswalker you control dies, look at the top seven cards of your library. You reveal a planeswalker from among them, put it in your hand, put the rest on the bottom in random order, and the planeswalker loyalty, loyalty abilities cost an additional plus one. So all the ones that say plus one will now say plus two, and all the ones that say minus one will now be zero abilities, and that type of thing. And then the last creature in the deck is Bioessence Hydra. This one's pretty much a must in a deck that's running this many Planeswalkers. Because it gets plus one, plus one counter for each uh, loyalty counter on each Planeswalker you control. And whenever one or more loyalty counters are put on a Planeswalker, put that many plus one, plus one counters on Bioessence Hydra. So it's going to get plus one, plus one counters for all your Planeswalkers on the board. And then every time you play one or activate their abilities, it's just going to get bigger. So this is really your game ender in most games. Like I said, you can take extra turns and there's ways to kill your opponents without this, but that's one of my favorite ways to kill everyone. I'm only running one of the oaths, the Oath of Teferi. Now I understand there's Oath of Teferi, there's the Oath of Nyssa and Oath of uh, Ajani, and, but I, I personally, I just like the Oath of Teferi, it lets you bounce something when it comes in and activate your loyalty abilities of planeswalkers twice each turn rather than once so that's one way to get into the extra activations of your planeswalkers now for the artifacts there's only six of them and most of them are mana rocks so you got soul talisman commander sphere soul ring and Lotus Petal, because we are playing five colors, so we want to get to our colors whatever ways we can, and extra mana whatever ways we can. The last two are, the, at least in my opinion, the two most important artifacts in the deck, being Thran Temporal Gateway and the Chain Veil. Now, Thran Temporal Gateway, you pay four, and you may put a historic permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. Artifacts, legendary sagas are historic. Now... More than half of our Planeswalkers are legendaries, so then you could pay four and put them on the battlefield instead of paying their mana cost. If you don't hit them on Prismatic Bridge, because let's be realistic here, some of them are going to land up in your hand and not going to land on the field. And then Chain Veil, at the beginning of your end step, if you didn't activate the loyalty ability of a Planeswalker, this turn you lose two life. Pay four for each Planeswalker you control, you may activate... One of its loyalty one of its loyalty abilities once this turn as though its loyalty abilities haven't been activated. So there's ways to untap this and retap this and untap this and retap this. So you can just keep activating your planeswalker abilities over and over and over and over and over again till you're taking extra turns, you're putting tons of things in the graveyard, grabbing extra creatures, whatever have you, and just killing out your opponents. Now, for the instance in the deck, there's quite a bit, because we got a lot of interaction in the deck, because we're not playing a lot of creatures, so you got to kind of interact where you can. Got Terminate, everybody's favorite blue card, Cyclonic Rift, haha, uh -huh. Putrefy, Spell Snuff, because if you're playing blue, you might as well play some counter spells. Rabbit Hybridization, get rid of some pesky creatures, because like I said, we're only playing four creatures in this deck. Yes, some of the Planeswalkers can make creature tokens, but generally, you know, you're trying to avoid that. Tamio safekeeping, crop rotation, because we need to get to our lands. Manatide, because a white counter spell for one, a lot of people don't see that coming. Dramatic reversal to untap stuff. Growth spiral, extra lands. Resculpt. Thrill of possibilities. Um, opt. I almost forgot what that card was. Brainstorm, Deliberate, and Curate. Because we want to control the top of our deck as best as we can to try and get to the cards we need sooner than later. Alright, now for the sorceries. Got a handful of sorceries in here. We've got three visits. Farseek. Cathartic Reunion. Diabolic Tutor, because you want to get to your important pieces as quick as you can cultivate preordain Nylea's intervention this card is eh, I mean it could be better but for what it is 
Call the gate watch so you can search your library for a planeswalker, reveal it, put it in your hand, and it's over your library. So if you need that one specific one to complete the combo, boom, you can search it out. And in Garrick's Wake, because every deck needs at least one board wipe, at least in my opinion. So leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this deck. Yes, I know it could be better. I know there are better planeswalkers out there, but for my budget and my play style and the way kind of I like playing this deck, it's been working fine for me. Let me know if you guys end up trying this out. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.